Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Finance Minister delivered the first medium-term budget policy statement of the Government of National Unity. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of the key themes. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Was there any marked change in the tone from previous statements? No, I don't think there was any marked change. I think it was a sort of a business as usual. National Treasury is one of the most professional departments in government and has been for many years. The budget process is a well-trodden path and, in fact, it gets international acclaim every year for being one of the most transparent budget processes in the world. So it continued in that vein. The question was raised to Deputy Minister Sarah Penn, who's from, not from the governing, the former governing party now in coalition or in the government of national unity with many others, but that Deputy Minister is from the Democratic Alliance, not from the African National Congress. And he said he was involved in all meetings and he's very comfortable with the outcome uh, um, of the MTBPS statement, even though we're in a very difficult predicament. As we know, we've been in this difficult predicament. And that is still the theme, if you ask about the theme and the tone. It's about how to get ourselves growing again, because we have a growth problem. And that growth problem, which has persisted now for over 10 years and was deepened with the state capture era and then with the uh, COVID crisis, you know, that that growth problems led to a fiscal crisis. So we've seen our uh, all our matrices, uh, uh, matrices really deteriorate quite poorly, badly. And we're now in a situation where uh, our uh, debt levels are really hard, around over 74% of GDP. Our government de our deficit uh, is over 5%. So it's really about clawing, clawing that back and trying to get debt under control. Debt's going to approach around the 6 trillion rand mark. It's, it's just a whole different level of debt than what we're used to. And it's going to peak next year at around 75% of GDP. And then the intention is to try to bring it down. But it's having a major impact on the ability of government to do what it needs to do and spend where it needs to spend with 22 cents in every rand now going to debt servicing costs. It's a major item. It's the biggest item on the budget, along with education, etc. So that's really the tone is set. And the tone is set by the poor performance of the economy. And while there, there's indications that maybe some of the coalition partners or government of national unity partners would like to see maybe a more rapid pace or a different pace of consolidation, there's no real disagreement on the need for consolidation. The issue of infrastructure and how to finance it was given a high profile. Yes, infrastructure is a public good uh, and we know what it can do for the economy and for job creation. There's a lot of job spin-offs from infrastructure and many, many social and economic spin-offs from having long-term good public infrastructure. And we've seen as South Africans what happens when you don't have that in place with our load shedding crisis, which thankfully has abated seriously. And we now, since the 26th of March, haven't had any load shedding incidents but it really was a major drag on the South African economy. But it's not limited to electricity generation. Uh, in the electricity sector alone, there's lots to do in the distribution and transmission space. There's big backlogs there. There's massive backlogs in the area of water. Uh, also, the aged water infrastructure is leading to what they call non-revenue losses, which are basically leaks in the system. Uh, we, we know that a lot of suburbs with, are without water on many days. Uh, there's, a, there's a crisis around freight rail, freight logistics. So really, the whole issue about infrastructure needing to spend more, one, to maintain the assets we have, much better than we have done, and two, to grow the asset footprint, because we've got backlogs all over the place, uh, is a major theme. Uh, the uh, I'd say the major new theme uh, uh, of this medium-term budget policy statement, really putting a lot of thought into how to crowd in private sector finance and capability into these areas of infrastructure, how to make con South Africa a construction site as the GNU partners want it to be. And, you know, when you've got no fiscal space to do it yourself, you need to lean on your private partners or your other partners. So there's two really two prongs to what the minister really spoke about on infrastructure. One 
doing more around their own public infrastructure, their own government infrastructure uh, of over 900 billion in the sort of medium term that needs to be spent there and getting that done much more efficiently uh, and uh, in, in a way that, that it's corruption resistant. Uh, so that's important. So there's some internal restructuring there that's taking place around uh, PPP units, et cetera. And then the, but the big theme is really about crowding in private sector participation, how to do that effectively and how to, you know, really leverage the private sector skills, but also their balance sheets to get us out of this deep infrastructure hole that we've dug for ourselves. And that if we don't get out of it, you know, the prognosis for the economy is really, really poor. As we saw with the electricity crisis, as I mentioned, but the freight logistics crisis has also put a cap, you know, on confidence and the level of investment that would have otherwise happened. If you can't move your goods efficiently uh, from, from either pit to port or in from the coast in containers or and out again as manufactured products, it really it makes us highly uncompetitive. So those sort of themes of water, transport and energy remain big, big themes. But the big new one would also be digital infrastructure. There are specific moves to unlock private sector participation to build new transmission infrastructure. Yeah, I think that's one of the big announcements of this budget. Uh, there, there weren't many new announcements, but really around the, what they call independent transmission projects, really putting in some sort of blended finance framework there to get these projects going. We know that Eskim's got a, a massive build program ahead if we're going to connect the many, many gigawatts of something like 53 gigawatts of uh, renewable uh, of electricity, most of that renewable uh, by 2032, 2035. It's a lot of capacity that we have to add. Many of this in spaces where the grid just doesn't either exist or is very weak. So Eskom's got its own plans, but I think government's got to the point where uh, this is going seen as a, a future potential bottleneck and they want to get on top of it through crowding in private sector participation around what we call RTPs, independent transmission projects, they're called RPTs in the rest of the world. But be that as it may, we're looking at a, a framework for blended finance and the, there's been a lot of work around a credit enhancement or credit guarantee scheme uh, that will support that with the World Bank. And there, basically, what the our intention is there is to de-risk the projects for the private sector to the point where they can invest like they have with renewable energies. Uh, the renewable energy has really been supported by government guarantees, so big government guarantees have backed that. So if Eskom can't pay, you know, government has promised that they will pay. Now, government have said they've reached the end of their runway with contingent liabilities on the national accounts, and they don't want to really add to those contingent liabilities. So they've been working with the World Bank on this credit framework to, you know, give the, the, the sort of guarantees that the private sector needs, that they know they're going to be paid, but by, without adding a new level of contingent liability onto, onto the books. That framework is going to be in place by the end of 2025. And the implication, therefore, because they say the RTP will be the first pilot of this using this, uh, this facility, the implication will be there's some procurement will take place towards the end of the year or be launched towards the end of next year to get new grid power line infrastructure from the private sector. What exact form that's going to take is not yet clear. Whether the NTCSA is fully backing it is not yet clear, but it's going to be some form of build, operate, and transfer, build, own, operate, and transfer. But uh, that still that still hasn't been made uh, crystal clear. And also the institutional arrangements around this: who will be the procuring agent? Even though the ultimate procurer will probably be NTCSA or government. The, the agent in the 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 renewable energy place uh, space has been the RPP office, and it's been a very professional outfit, been dedicated to transactions, and I think that that's what we'll see some form of uh, office for our RTP office being set up to procure, and I think we should see that happening, and maybe a little bit more detail hopefully in the next budget. But it's all under this theme of crowding in private sector participation, but piloting this new framework or this new guarantee framework or blended finance approach, um, specifically in the transmission area. Thank you.
That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.